Hello, I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your Cardboard Concierge. Thank you for joining me for what is going to be a Cardboard Coat Check. So we've got this game that showed up and I'd like to check it in, but I can't just check it in without checking to see what's inside it first, you know, just health and safety reasons. So as you probably figured out, this is the silly name we give our unboxing videos here at Tabletop Bellhop. Today I am taking a look at Horrified from Ravensburger. This is a Universal Studios themed game based on the classic Universal Studios monsters, Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, Dracula, all those ones that uh, people as old as I did grew up with, as old as I am grew up with. Uh, before we get into that though, again, I am the Tabletop Bellhop. The main thing I do is answer your gaming and game night questions. At Tabletop Bellhop, we're trying to be a dear Abbey for gamers, tabletop gamers specifically, both board gamers and role-playing gamers. You can send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or head over to our webpage, tabletopbellhop.com, and click on Ask the Bellhop. Over on that webpage, you can find our answers to other people's questions. There's a whole ton of gaming advice there. In addition, you can find reviews, news, and other interesting gaming stuff. We do a week in review where I talk about all the games I've played. We also have a bunch of master lists. So you can find lists of gaming podcasts, gaming streamers, and tabletop crafters on Etsy with some of the coolest component upgrades you've ever seen. But enough about me, we're gonna get to this game. This is Horrified. I'm gonna tip the camera down because you don't wanna stare at my face. You wanna know what's in the box. All right, so the first thing, you'll note this isn't in shrink wrap, it came taped. So another thing I do have to note, Ravensburger did send me a copy of this game for review purposes. No other compensation was provided, just this review copy. Uh, this copy came in and it has plastic stickers holding it shut. So I am gonna grab a trusty hobby knife and just slice that open. Right off the bat, I had gotta say, I like the quality of the box. It's got, I don't know how to describe it. It's got a nice texture. It's got a nice feel to it. It's a nice thick cardboard. It's got a really nice matte finish. And here we go. One of the things I like to do is do these videos live. So you get to hear my thoughts as they happen for the first time. So I've never seen this game in person. I've only seen hype online. So here's what we get. Well, I'll talk about that. They're warning us right away. We're gonna hold this up. We feel it would be a little unkind to present this game without a friendly warning. You are about to unfold on one of the strangest tales ever told. We think it will thrill you, it may shock you, it might even horrify you. So if any of you feel that you do not care to subject your nerves to such strain, now is your chance. We warned you. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna have to put this away. I can't, no, no, no. All right, along the side of the box, we have the classic movies listed um, with the background. So the mummy, an Egyptian high priest buried alive and is back to life through the ancient life-giving scroll. The mummy will stop at nothing when he seeks to be reincarnated, sorry, seeks the reincarnated soul of his beloved. And we have Dracula. Of course, I'm looking at a different side. Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, the Invisible Man, the Wolfman, and the Creature from the Black Lagoon. Nice artwork, I gotta say. That's uh, It's not screenshots, it's hand-drawn. That's nice. Yeah, nice touch. I dig it. Oh, that's on the board. That's even cooler. Okay, that's the back of the board. I dig that. That's I'm impressed. Right there. All right, we're going to open this up since that's what's on top. Is that small print? That is small print. Okay, there's some small print on the back of the board. Universal Monsters are trademarks of Universal Studios, etc. All right, I got to say, I, I, I feel like I just opened a game from the 80s. Mounted board. You don't see mounted boards that often anymore. Classic mounted style board. Uh, maybe that's what they're going for. It's nice, bright, easy to tell what's going on, easy to see. Um, camps, you've got the precinct, you got the inn, you got the river and the lagoon. That definitely sounds like a bunch of monster stuff. Man, what a look. Like that, that, it's the Tyrants of the Underdark problem. All right, so then we have the rule book which I don't know if it's upside down or I turn this upside down. We have the rule book. Okay, come on, camera. There we go. Thank you. Um, so we have the instructions. Uh, we will take a look. One to five players. That's going to be good. Place five. Ages 10 and up. 60 minutes. To learn to play, watch the video. That's becoming more and more common. I like it. Not for me. I personally like to read to learn. But other people like to be taught. And other people like to watch. So... Oh, now that's a rule book. Like just compared to the last game I unboxed, which I'm not gonna mention here, this isn't tiny text. This is nice and bright, nice, easy to see, lots of examples. 
pictures of all the components. Again, props for black text on light background. Always a fan of that. I hate companies that do the dark with the light text. We got objectives, how to play. There's going to be items. Again, I have not played this game, so I don't know what all this is about. Monster phase, what the monsters are going to do. So you are definitely playing the good guys. I actually thought you may have been playing the monsters. I had no idea. Nice looking rule book. I'm impressed. Lots of examples, lots of shots. You got little call outs to the different characters. We got to an appendix. We are looking at 15 pages of rules. That's significant. That is not a play with your friends, open up the box and start playing a five minutes game. That is not a mass market like game. Uh, unlike Minecraft, that's not, this is a, a significant game it looks like, significant box. Uh, we have a bunch of cardboard. What is a good game if it wasn't lots of cardboard? Probably call this our cardboard coat check. Always cut away from yourself when using a hobby knife. All right, Ravensburger seems to have a new love of standees. Which is fine. I'm a big fan of miniatures myself. But your characters are obviously standees here. We got, uh, this is more for people who haven't watched my recent, a slightly thicker card here. So we got decent thickness cardboard, pretty normal thickness. We have a whole bunch of, it looks like NPCs and then player characters, as well as some location tiles. We'll try, let's see, there we go now. Whoa, it's escaping. Looks pretty good. I like the art style, it's really nice. Especially with everything hand drawn. Like, sorry, it being artwork instead of like stills. Being Universal Studios, they could have easily done these all as stills. Uh, here we have our characters. I'm impressed by the look of this. I like the fact they're not wasting money with art on both sides. It's nice. We got some nice darker cards and items. All kinds of items. You got your. It's where you find them, interestingly. So the camp, tarot card, you've got crosses. Really impressed. Really nice looking art. I like these call outs. That's nice with the arrow to show where they're going to. More games should do that with their tokens. Have a little spot to be like, if your map's a little rough, you can show where it goes. Really impressed. Whole bunch more items. Obviously this is gonna be a collect the item game. Go around town, collect the item, destroy the monsters. That's my guess, not having actually played. Then we get into components. To go with the standees, we have the stands. Plastic stands, pretty self-explanatory, pretty typical. Uh, player colors as well as clear. Like I said, there's gonna be villagers, obviously. No complaints about that. Custom dice. Some people love them, some people hate them. What's amusing is I see some repeat symbols from another Ravensburger game. They obviously like to reuse their artwork because that symbol is the same as another game we just recently looked at. And then we have some burst symbols. We have three bursts, one exclamation point, and two blanks. That are the odds on the dice. Nice custom dice. Uh, note these are etched like inset. So it's not, um, not just paint, it's not gonna rub off. It's not uh, silk screened. Box insert looks serviceable. It's, it's better than some, worse than others. Then we have, of course, the monsters. Now, I uh, wish my camera luck is the best I'm gonna be able to say here. We're gonna hold up Frankenstein. There we go, that's, that's pretty good. Camera focused all right on him. That's nice, that's a nice mini. Like this is nothing compared to Cthulhu Death May Die, which I opened earlier today. But you know what, this is serviceable. I can clearly tell that is the mummy. There's no mistaking it besides the colors. Bride of Frankenstein's just screaming for a paint job, though. I wonder why they chose green. And come on, there's a classic Dracula pose for you. Dig it. I have to guess this is the Invisible Man. That one's a little hard to see, even with my eyes. The detail on that one's a little bit lacking. 
I can't tell who that is. Jekyll and Hyde, maybe? Oh, Wolfman. That's the Wolfman. Got it. So the details on the figure are just hard to see just because of the plastic, the type of plastic they used. Yes, the Invisible Man is hard to see. And the creature from the Black Lagoon. Nice. They're they're nice. They're serviceable. They're, they're, they stick out. Like, I've got them here in front of me. Here, let's throw them over here. Like, from a distance, those are easy to tell apart. I like it. Impressed by the minis. I said they're not they're not cool mini or not style, they're not hobby miniature style, but for board game pieces, these are excellent. Alright, we have a baggie. We're obviously probably pulling those item chips out of the baggie. We have a Ziploc card for all of the monsters. Dracula. I love the art in this. That is really nice art. Interestingly, it looks like they all have their own unique mechanics. Because that mummy is very different from the bottom of that Dracula card. Oh yeah, definitely. Ah, Frankenstein and the Bride look like they go together. Yeah, it looks like each one has its own little mini game. Wolfman. This is impressive looking. I am about to give one major complaint though. That is some of the thinnest paper. Wow. Like I was complaining about paper boards. Like I can't even hold that flat without it bending. That is disappointingly thin. Like I, I worry about that. If that gets wet at all, it's gone. Whew. All right, just to flip to the back of these. Um, monster setup. They're all, so it looks like all the monsters are involved even though you may be playing Dracula or these are reference cards. These may be reference cards, because those are the same on every one. I like the symbols they use for the characters here. Yeah, flimsy. That's that, look at that. That's, that's folding, just holding, like, that's a stack of them. A little disappointed with that. Like, that's thinner than Terraforming Mars player board level there. Everything else is so nice, too. Why couldn't they just put those on something a little thicker? It's not even cardstock. Touch above paper. So one correction, it looks like the rule book is actually 14 pages long. Um, and someone is knowing that it's just slightly smidge easier than Pandemic in complexity. So if you can get Pandemic, you'll easily be able to get this. I wasn't expecting a heavy game. The board makes it look very light. The more I open, the more it looks heavier than that. All right, so we have a card deck. We are starting off with a nice summary card. This is something that should be in every game that's produced ever. We talk about player created player aids. Even better, company created player aids right in the box from the start. Thank you, Ravensburger. I'm just going to toss these back in the box. We have a bunch of cards with hands on them. Now I'm just kind of disturbed. There's like moving and touching things. I don't know. On the other side, we have more excellent art. I have it upside down. I like the Art Deco look on the background. Choose one. Place Wolfman in any space or move any monster three spaces. Hunter becomes prey. Power of the Ancients. We have some types of event deck here. I'm going to hold up a few of them. Black and white art, which kind of fits the theme. But it's still nice art. Again, all drawn, not screenshots. Very readable. Even with my eyes. Like, I can read that from here. That's, that's a good thing. That's a very good thing nowadays. I complain about small fonts a lot. Uh, then we have some much more colorful cards here in the foot deck. So, of course, the first one's kind of boring, but I notice there's some nice colors here. Not bright, but, for example, we got Creepy Dracula here. With his hypnotic gaze. There's numbers at the top of the cards. I don't know. Um, some kind of initiative or power level. Uh, you got the delivery place, Wilbur and Chick at the shop. And at the bottom, there's all kinds of symbols for the monsters. I have no clue, having not played the game. And that is it. Uh, these cards, again, that's, that's, a, that's a flimsy thin card. That is not even playing card stock. 
Uh, that's not magic card stock. That's that's a step down from any of that. That is thin cards. I am not someone who sleeves, but I would be tempted to sleeve this just to protect these cards, especially if you shuffle this deck off often. All right, so overall thoughts, um, based on what I saw right here, I'm not going to bother rebagging those. I don't see any reason to. Game looks neat. Looks even neater than I thought it would. I'm really impressed by the look of the game. The, the artwork, the style is very cool. Very impressive. Component quality could be better. Um, the quality of the cards and these monster boards in particular are very thin. I, I worry about those getting damaged. If the game's popular enough, it's going to get a lot of play. Uh, the other thing I worry about, too, is if this seems like the kind of game you'd want to have at, like, a local game store and have a demo copy out, something that's going to be good for non-gamers who come in. And if this gets played by a lot of people, I worry about it. And it's odd because, the th like, the punch boards are nice and thick. They're great. It's so kind of mixed quality. Artwork is amazing. I really like that style. It's, I don't even know how you describe it. It's, it's not cartoony. It's not quite comic book. Nice. I like that. And this was, I gotta admit, real nice touch. Real nice touch on the back of the board. Everything fit back in fine. I probably forgot something. All right. We got the baggie. We got this. Got all that. Fits back in nice. I'm sure once it's punched, it should fit just as well. All right. So that was horrified. Universal Monsters from Ravensburger. I'm impressed. Uh, this looks better than I thought it would, to be honest. Uh, the board is a little strikingly 80s looking. It looks like something I got when I was a kid for Christmas. Uh, the playing pieces are really neat. I like them. They, they, again, remind me of something I got in the 80s. Like when you go to the store and buy the tube of plastic figures. That's what that reminds me of, which is pretty cool. Uh, art's amazing. Component quality is mixed. There, there's some stuff there that's a little thinner than I would have liked. This is a game where you may want to sleeve the cards. They seem a little thinner than, than I would prefer. Now, maybe you don't shuffle that off and maybe it's okay. I'm, I'm not usually one who sleeves. It looks good. I'm, I'm impressed by what I saw in this box. I'm looking forward to playing this. I might even get this out next Saturday. So when I do get this out, I will be reviewing it. You can find that review at tabletopbellhop.com. Again, I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop. You can find me all over the internet as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Uh, if you're trying to find out when we put stuff out, I do do a weekly newsletter. You can subscribe to that at newsletter.tabletopbellhop.com. If you get that, I send out an email every Wednesday that lets you know about all the content we put out each week. That includes things like these unboxing videos, actual play videos, um, our live streams that we record two to three times a week, as well as any blog posts that I write. If you dig the content you just watched and you like our stuff, do that thing that makes all content creators happy. Hit like, thumbs up, subscribe, plus one, whatever platform you're on, hit that you did a good job button. If you really dig what we're doing, head over to patreon.com slash tabletop bellhop and tip your bellhop. For Tabletop Bellhop, I am Motuzno, the Tabletop Bellhop. Good night and game on.